Hiya, welcome back. So I want to go over example 9 with you, okay? This is another tilting one, but with a small difference, okay? Let's read the question. So it's that one there, in case you're not too sure of it. Okay, freeze frame that if you need to read it, okay? Um, a non-uniform rod, AB of length 10 meters and weight 40 newtons is suspended from a pair of light cables attached to C and D, okay? Um, where AC is 3 meters, BD is 2 meters, okay? Can you see where the center of mass is roughly going to be? All right. Can you see that the center of mass is could be roughly between C and D? This is another type of question, okay? This time this is not resting on any supports, so there's no normal reaction. No normal reaction. So what's keeping it up? Okay? It's the two tensions in the string that's what's keeping it up. So you've got tension there and tension there. Now I am going to defer to T1 and T2, despite what I said in the previous video about not liking ones and twos. Uh, there are always exceptions in there, but there's always tension. I always use T for tension, okay? So tension one, tension two, okay? Um, and that's what's keeping it up, okay? So imagine, I'm sorry, I, I didn't bring in string. I suppose I could have done, but I didn't, okay? Deal with it. So imagine just holding something up with strings, okay? There's tension strings, that's what's holding up, not normal reactions, okay? Um, do you know why the center mass would be somewhere in there, okay? Otherwise it's gonna tilt, isn't it? It's not gonna balance out. And I'll further demonstrate that when I read the rest of the question. So let's just put in the weight somewhere there, shall we? Okay. Does it say how much it weighs? Yeah, it says 40 newtons. And notice the um, fact that it is given to us as a weight, so we don't put 40 G. Um, 40 is not the mass, is it? It's 40 newtons. Okay. Um, then a weight of 25 newtons is hung from A. So let's just put that in. So from A, there's a weight of 25 newtons. Okay. There we go. And the rod is up on the point of rotating. Why is it on the point of rotating? Okay. It's lightsaber time again. Here we go. So it's on the point of what? Oh, you want it turned on, do you? Okay. There you go. Better? Okay. Well, what's happening is that you've got it effectively attached by two pieces of string. Okay. Now then, what happens if a stu sorry, a small child sits on the end of this, okay, well, what are they going to do, okay? Well, likelihood is the ropes will snap, okay? Um, but what if they don't? What if they're made of metal chains and they're strong enough to withhold the weight of the child sitting here, okay? Well, what's going to happen is the thing is going to tilt again, isn't it? There's going to be tilting going on, okay? Um, how will it tilt? Well, because the child sits here, it's going to go down that way, isn't it? There's going to be a turning moment that way, okay? Just do it slowly. If I match up my lightsaber with the actual rod, okay, and if it tilts with the boys, to... sorry, I assume they're, well, I can't, boys are a bit stupid, aren't they? Let's be honest, let's face it. Okay, so if a, all right, if, if a child sits there, okay, then it's going to sort of tilt like that, isn't it? Okay, can you see what's happening? It's going to tilt like that, as long as the cables don't snap. What is actually happening with the actual, Cables, and I'm sorry I used the word actual twice in one sentence. What has actually happened with the cables? Okay, well, assuming they're light, inextensible strings, they don't extend, the length of this one and the length of this one, they don't change, they're exactly the same. So what's happening is that cable is still taut, okay, fully extended. This cable is now slack, it's like a slack string, okay. Is there any tension in a slack string? No, there's no tension at all in a slack string, okay? So the only tension involved would be that one there. So in this case, the tilting means that there's no tension on that second string there, T2, okay? I'll get rid of the lightsaber now. Yes, I'm trying to find the off button, there it is. Okay. So, um, the one thing I'm annoyed about is lightsaber is that the on off button is there, okay? Whereas it kind of should be there. No, no. Otherwise, it's kind of it's not a bad replica. Okay, you know who's hilt there? Yeah, you know, not just because it's red, but that's Darth Vader's. Okay, a Star Wars fan would know that. Okay, here you are. If you're a Star Wars fan. Whose is that? Okay, whose lightsaber is this? It used to be extensible, but battle damage. <laughs> yeah. Um, answers, please. Post them to me. Whose lightsaber hilt was that? I just um, showed you. Okay, you only get one guess at it. All right, and um, if more than one person guesses, I'll. Yeah, I'll, I'll announce who the winner was after, if you can get it, okay? 
Um, right, please don't Google that straight away. Follow this because this is this is still cool. Okay, Star Wars is great. This is still cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So look. So when it says here, it's on the point of rotating or tilting. Okay. You got to know what that means. Okay. So um, I'm going to put tilting still because it's basically the the topic area to deal with. Okay. It's going to tilt about C as I suggested. Okay. The, Thing's gonna do that. This looks pathetic next to a lightsaber, doesn't it? Okay, this is what I do in class. Yeah, but you think I'm taking my lightsaber to school? No. How long would it stay in my classroom, really? Um, so tilting about C, that implies that the tension T2 is equal to zero. All right? Good. So where should we take moments from? Whereabouts shall we take moments from? Okay, well, it's best to take moments about C, isn't it? Really, okay, because then we can ignore all the tensions altogether. So as I've said previously, tilting is great because that means that a lot of the um, forces you can just ignore. Okay, so moments about C. Okay, uh, then let's do that. Okay, now as with the previous example, if I take moments about C, I've only got two moments to consider that one and that one. So I could say that subtract that equals zero, but this time I'm just going to go straight for this one is equal to this one. Okay, um, so we've got twenty-five times by three. And that's equal to, I'm assuming I've got to work out what the centre of mass is here. Um, yeah, find the distance of the centre of mass from A. Yep, so maybe I'll just label that up as that, um, well, it's going to be more convenient, isn't it, if I call that a bit X. Yeah, if I'm taking moments about C, I don't want to complicate it by saying all of that is X, do I? Do I want to complicate it? No is the answer to that. I do not want to complicate it. I want to keep it simple. So I'll call that bit x. Okay. So that means all I have to do is just write equals 40x. Gives me an easier equation to solve, doesn't it? Okay. So what we're going to have, 75 is equal to 40x. And we'll just work out what that is, shall we, quickly. So we just do 75 divided by 40. No, not that one. 75 divided by 40. Uh, yeah, so it's um, 1.875. So x is 1.875 metres, and it wanted it from A, didn't it? So but therefore, 4.875 metres. And even though the question said, do it from A, I'm going to write down from A as well. Okay. And yeah, you see in the textbook they did this awkward thing with the x minus 3. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Keep it nice and simple like this. Okay. Is that all right? Is that good for you? Good. Well, that was the last example in the chapter and last example in the Mechanics 1 textbook. OK, but not the last example you'll ever do in maths. You'll be pleased to hear. There's plenty more good stuff to come. OK. All right. Thank you. Hope you enjoy that. OK. Hope you're staying safe and I'll see you again.